demands of uncommon results. Hallelujah. I don't like your amen. Hallelujah. Maybe you already have the results you want, so you, you don't really care, but <laughs> if you need results, I want to hear your hallelujah tonight. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to thank our Papa Apostle Joshua Boateng for the opportunity and for availing himself for our generation. God is using him mightily to turn things and to turn lives around. Papa, we say God bless you. And wherever the First Lady is, Pastor Sylvia, God bless you too. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are in the month of uncommon results. And tonight we are here to pray. Are you here to pray? Hallelujah. And then uh, I have titled my message for tonight as activating the Christ in you. Hallelujah. Activating the Christ in you. Let me hear you say it. Say, activating the Christ in me. Activating the Christ in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of your son Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you in advance for what you are about to do. Father, I stand here as a vessel. I avail myself for your spirit to use me to bless your people tonight. I silence any horns of the wicked tonight and every assignment of hell that will try to sabotage this message. In the name of Jesus, speak to your children. Transform our lives and meet us here tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Activating the Christ in you. Hallelujah. I was thinking about what to share tonight. And personally, I'm like embarking on a journey. I'm, I, I, I'm trying to look for the Christ in me. It's something I'm doing on purpose. And I'm learning a couple of things that I wanted to share with us tonight. Because more often when we say Christ, a picture of a young man who is nailed to a cross with blood all over with marks of whips all over his body is what comes to mind. Like a young man with disciples spreading the word of God, that is the picture that comes to mind. So I ask the question, do we really understand what Christ is? And we will try to look at Christ from a perspective of a title more than a personality. But a title or a garment, you can say a garment or a cloth that we all need to put on as believers. Hallelujah. So what does Christ actually mean? In a little research I did, it says Christ is from the Greek word Christos. It's from the Greek word Christos, which means that the anointed one. The anointed one or the Hebrew word Mashiach which means the Messiah or the anointed one so I've had a debate I mean a pastor was saying even when you call yourself a Christian what are you really referring to I am a follower of Christ which we are follower of the anointed one the anointed one by who? Like Pastor said not too long ago, he is the anointed one. So don't be surprised if somebody says, I am a Christian, and then right there you doubt him because you know the kind of life they are living. So if he says he's a Christian, he's a follower of the anointed one. Who, who anointed that anointed one? So there was a debate and a man of God was saying, was it even wrong to call yourself a Christian that you should actually say, I am a Christian of Yahweh. 
that I am the follower of the anointed one of Yahweh or the anointed one of Jehovah. So the Christ is the title. Hallelujah. And then we want to confirm the people that confirm that he was the Christ in the Bible. So let's look at Matthew 16, the verse number 16. He says, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. If we continue to the 17. Okay, I think I gave him the 16. So, 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 so Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when he continued, Jesus said that this revelation was revealed to you from heaven, from above. And he continued by saying, based on this, or upon this rock, upon this revelation, will I build my church. There was a church before Christ came because there, 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 there were the scribes and the leaders of the church before Christ came. But he says, based on the revelation that I am the child of the son of God, I am going to build my church. And like pastor says, when you talk about church, it's not the building, it's the people. We are the church. So if we are followers of Christ, our foundation as Christian is the fact that the man that we have choose to follow is the Christ or the anointed one of God. Hallelujah. We look at Matthew 26, the verse number 63. And he says, but Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. And when he continued, Jesus said, yes, I am. So he confirms that he is Christ, the anointed one of God. Hallelujah. And finally, Luke 4, 41. He says, and, the, and devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. So these three verses actually confirms that he is the anointed one of God. Hallelujah. So when we look at the life of Christ, he came to do so many things. And often when we, when we talk about his sacrifice in his life, we talk about the fact that he was nailed to a cross. But I want you to look at it from this angle. That when we talk about Jesus sacrificing his life, think about the fact that he could have chosen to be whatever he wanted to be. I don't know where you are coming from or I don't know whether you like the job you are doing. But some, somebody might ask you, why do you do this job? And then you say, for the sake of my children, for the sake of my family. What you are actually doing is you have sacrificed your life so that your children will enjoy a better life. Why are you here tonight? You could have been on your bed, but you have sacrificed this time so that you can pray for something that you desire. So when we are talking about God came to die for us, he did not just come, hey, kill me so that these people will leave. No. But there were hidden things that we needed to know. There were things that were not supposed to be said or mentioned. There were things that only few, even as of now, there are things that some powerful people in the world know. It's a secret. Those were the kind of things that Jesus said, no. I have come so that you might have life. I have come to expose all these things to you. If you want to be successful in life, this is how to go about it. If you want to go to the Father, this is how to go about it. So I sacrifice my life so that you will know this truth and your life will be easier. Hallelujah. That is the sacrifice that he came to, to give us. Hallelujah. So Christ... Tonight, we are looking at it as a garment, as a title. 
that whoever calls his or herself a follower of Christ must put on. Hallelujah. Let's read something from John 4, the verse number 6. John 14, sorry. Verse number 6. He said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Are you searching for God? Jesus says he's the way. When he says he's the way, he's not talking about a, 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 a way that you just have to follow. Or he leading a way and you just follow. If you want to go to the Father, you need to put on the garment of a Christ. To have access to the Father. That is why we say there is no other way to get to the Father except through Christ. So, you are not looking at the person sitting somewhere and then praying to him and then asking him to take you to the Father. If that is the reason, then we have failed. Because he came down here to show us a way. To tell us the truth. And to lead us to the Father. He saw the life to live to get to the Father. So if you are looking for God, how did Jesus do it? If you are going through certain situation, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, how would Jesus have handled this situation? When he encountered anything, he didn't go lock himself in a room crying. That is no solution. He didn't go around begging. That wasn't the solution. He spoke. He cast out demons. And whatever he said came to pass. Hallelujah. That is the life. That is the way he wants us to lead our life. Not to sit somewhere. Sorrowfully. And looking up to him to come to our aid. No. He says I've come. I am the way. The truth. And the life. So if you want to go to the father. You have to walk like me. You have to speak like me. And then you have to live like me. Hallelujah. Jesus. Or Christ. The garment. Tonight what we are trying to do. Is to activate the Christ in us. It is in there and it has been dormant for some time. It has been dormant for a while. It's like you have the answers to all the questions in life, all the challenges. You have the solution in there, but you leave it and you go out seeking for the solution. So tonight we want to activate it. Hallelujah. Let's look at something from John verse number 1 verse 12. Jesus says something very powerful here. He said, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe it on his name. Hallelujah. As many as received him, what did he do? He gave them power to become the sons of God. And daughters of God. Is Jesus the son of God? So as many as receive him. To be their Lord and Savior. He gives you the same power. Or the same anointing that his father conferred on him. He gives it to you. To also be the son or the daughter of God. What am I trying to say? What I'm saying is that you become like Jesus. And that is our inheritance. When you receive him, you do not just follow him and ask him things. You become like him. Whatever he is, whatever the father has made him, he share with us. So we are brothers with him. Hallelujah. We become the sons and the daughters of God. 
I don't know, are you the son of God? Are you the daughter of God? If you are the son of God or the daughter of God, what it means is that Jesus is a brother. Hallelujah. He is a brother. You can see him as your Lord and King, your Savior, your Master, but tonight I want you to see him as a brother. Not as a brother because you, you come from the same father, but as a brother because whatever he did, you can do the same. Hallelujah. This is our month of uncommon results. I don't know about you, but last year, somewhere last year, around the COVID time, and in Africa around this time, you know, the devil is at work. So even when it's about Christmas, people don't even go out a lot. Because there are a lot of accidents and a lot of chaos. And right here in Columbus, I think a man was going to pick up the wife from work and they were involved in an accident. So when it's about Christmas, when the year is ending, so many things happen. So if you are looking for an uncommon result, I want you to activate the Christ in you tonight. And begin to declare and decree things as if you were Christ. Because he says to them that receive him, he gave them power to be sons and daughters of God. So as you sit here, you are the daughter of God. As you sit here, you are the son of God. As you sit here, you are a brother. You are a sister to Jesus. And the power that was given him, that when he spoke, the devil bowed. That when he spoke, demons flee. That when he spoke, things happened you begin to speak and things will begin to happen for you and your family and the devil has no say in your life activating the Christ in you Christ is a garment it means the anointed one so if you have accepted him you've been anointed hallelujah let's read something from John 14 12 he gives us another inheritance. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do and even greater mm. this is very powerful can you do greater than jesus he says yes if you believe in me whatever you speak of as a miracle in the bible that the bible says that i did you will do and even do greater things in other words, it means that if Jesus is here, he sees you even as a big brother or a big sister. He could say, no, I want to learn from you. Do something. Let me learn from you. Because the things that I'm doing, you can do greater things. So are you ready to do greater things? Are you ready to do greater things? your yes is sick are you ready to do greater things so you have to begin to when you speak and when you pray see them coming to pass I've said it before that we pray and then we go to sleep and when we're growing up my friend used to laugh at me he says you go to church every day you pray you pray you pray 31st night you pray you pray you pray you pray look me, I go to church once every five years see because when god looks at your prayer request he said ah that's too much but when he looks at mine he said okay let me fix that one because we pray we do not take god oh we we not take him accountable we need this we need you to do this we need you to do that it doesn't happen we don't care so why do you keep coming here if you believe that he is more than able to do and you believe that when you speak it will happen why do you come to pray 
and you do not see the results you seek and it's like you don't care you just draw a conclusion maybe it's God he does whatever you want he knows what's good for me hold him accountable to his word because he has given us the mandate he has given us the power that whatever we want all the things that we saw him do he kept he wrote he, he, he raised Lazarus from the dead he healed the blind a lot of things he walked on the sea he blessed bread and fish he fed five thousand people we talk of all those miracles he, and and we don't see any in our life because the Christ in us the anointing that we have received upon we accepting him as our Lord and Savior the anointing that we receive the garment of the Christ that we have to put on to make declarations and decrees and to bind and to lose we are not doing it so we are not seeing it and some people think it has to do with the church so we, we keep changing church if you go here hi the man of God, he was powerful like two years ago. Now he's down, he's down, he's down. The energy is down. Let me go to another place. But they are pastors. They are here to guide us. Like I said, God does not belong to him. He belongs to all of us. So if you do not have the spirit of God and you do not make decisions for yourself and study the word for yourself, Somebody will lead you to hell. I said the last time, an evangelist in Ghana, she said, they told me hair cream was from under the sea. So when I entered the church and the pastor said, permian cream is from under the sea, I went to the barber shop and cut off all my hair. If you don't study the scripture for yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit, somebody might mis mislead you. So we need, that, we need to put on the garment of Christ. Hallelujah. Ben Sini Dahonsa says something. He said he read the scriptures that Jesus rose somebody from the dead, that a prophet rose somebody from the dead. And he read this very thing that he said that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and even greater works. He said, ah, he went to the pastor and said, Pastor, so Jesus rose somebody from the dead. Can I do the same? And the pastor said, if you have faith and you believe, you can do it. He says he walked out and he was walking from house to house asking, is anybody dead here? And he said, finally, I found a house and the little boy was dead. I said, glory to God. He says, leave the boy to me. He prayed, he prayed, he prayed. He said, the boy was still there. Then he went back to the Bible. And the Bible says that the, 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 the prophet sent everybody out and locked the door. So he said, everybody go out. He locked the door. He said, he prayed in the name of Jesus. And the body began to move. And the boy got up. He said, he went back to the Bible. And he said, the prophet said, give him something to eat. So he went and said, give him something to eat. And he went to the next house. Is anybody dead here? And if you know him, he's Bessini Dahosa. He rose people from the dead. Because he believed in this. That whoever believed in me, the things that I did, and even greater things, will he do? If I ask you, what percentage of the Christ in you have you activated what can you say if you wake up in the morning till the evening and you assess the day can you say ah god i am not perfect i am not righteous but today glory be to your name that i was able to speak to somebody concerning you i don't know what's happening but nowadays people just call me my friends call me and 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 they, and they want to like have a bible studies what do you think about this verse? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? I'm saying, what's going on? So I, 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 I listen. Because of my work, I, I don't get too much time to read during the day. But I, I, I go to YouTube. I listen to a lot of 
preaches and I, I compare notes I just to awaken the Christ in me hallelujah now he says something in Luke 9 23 to 25 if you want to awaken the Christ in you if you want to put on the garment something that we have to do he said and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save him 25 for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away hallelujah can you put a 23 back he says you have to deny yourself there is a standard that the world has set that defines how a person should be successful when he says deny yourself it means deny the life that everybody think it is life do you need to build houses or to buy a house and then everybody like oh you've done well and there are people who say no that that is my first house i need a bigger one I went to Ghana and uh, a friend who lived here invited me. He was like, come, come, come home, come home, come home, come home. I, I didn't understand. So I went there and I saw home. It was home. Hi. It was a beautiful house. Beautiful house. I said, wow. And I said, this is a dream house. He said, no, no, no. This is, not, this is my first house. I don't have a pool here. I don't have a gym here. So Wow. I said, so this is possible. You say, oh, we built it within six months. It costs almost $500,000 in Ghana. So, wow. So I asked, so it's possible. How can we, how, how do we build this? Because 500000 I mean, people are making $30,000 a year. Thirty-five, fifty. People make 100000 and they are like, they are over there. 500000 and he said, and my, my wife used to laugh at me with this one. He said, I know you, you are hardworking. All you got to do is to focus. I said, focus? He said, yeah, whatever you are doing, just focus. And I'm like, I get paid $16. I don't know if I should stop sleeping at work. It's what you mean by focus. Or I should put in more over time. What, what do you mean by focus? Like, and then my 35,000, 40,000 will be 500,000 or 1 million. What do you mean by focus? But that is how the world measures success. Has a lot of friends, everybody. Hey, you're doing good, man. Yeah, you're doing well. People are coming around. He's buying cars here and there. And, and our family people are thinking, hey, what kind of life are you living there? That's your co-equal, you know? So, okay, I will focus. But that is the standard of the world. Because, put the 24 there. Night 24, Elder. He said, for whosoever will save his life. What we are trying to do is to save our life. That this brother is good. He's in the eyes of people. He takes care very care of his family he in the eyes of his people he's doing so so much he's very hard working oh he's a successful man he said but for whosoever will save his life <laughs> because when you go to their closet you think they have it all they cannot sleep it's not like god cannot give this the bible says the blessings of god is what makes a man rich and it has no sorrow. But what the world gives, hey, 
People are not sleeping, no. Mm. People are not sleeping. In their house, there are security. Some have soldiers, some have police, and they have guns, and they still cannot sleep. When you come to church, even right now, you are even sleeping. You are not happy, even in church. Because you have the peace of God. If you want the world to define you, <laughs> you try to live according to the standard of the world by trying to save your life, Jesus say you will lose it. But when you deny yourself and say, God, I, I told a friend, I say, Jesus' father was a carpenter. Jesus could have started his own value city. He could have started his own furniture company. But he abandoned that life. He put it aside. Because of you and I, he wanted to show you the way, the truth, and the life. So that you get to the father. So what he expects us to do is not always go on our knees calling him, calling him, calling him. But then we, we look at, at the situation that came his way and how he dealt with it. And we can do same. Because he says, if we believe in him, all the things that he came to do and greater things, shall we also do? Why? Because we that received him, he gave us the power or the right to be like him, to be the children, the sons and the daughters of God. So see Jesus as a brother. See Jesus as a role model. See Jesus as somebody who came to lay down his life to teach you how to go to the Father. So when you need something, you get up. When, when, when they say something, like me, my sister, my sister prays very well. She will call me and say, ah, I had this dream. I, and I'll just get up when I was in Ghana. I walk to the field and I'll begin to pray. I'll begin to pray. I'll begin to pray. And things will begin to happen. And I will know that these are testimonies from my prayer. So when things are coming your way, you don't cry, you don't cry, why me, why me, why me? But you, you, you get up on your feet and you begin to declare things into the atmosphere. You begin to change things by your word of mouth because there is power in the tongue. Because you are like Christ and like Christ when he came, he spoke a lot of things and they came into being so are you he gave you the power to speak to silence the enemy so when they call you and they say uh -uh, your child is sick your child will not do this he will not do that or you cannot afford this uh -uh. you speak is like a child of god you speak like christ and you say i can do all things i can do all things because i am anointed i can do all things because the christ is me has been activated and I have access to the Father. Hallelujah. So tonight what we are going to do is to declare things like Christ did. Expecting results. You declare things like Christ did. Expecting results. There's been a lot of prophecies. There's been a lot of predictions. It's a tough year. And don't think that everything will be cool. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. There's been prophecy of hunger throughout the world. Every preacher, all, every spiritual preacher have, have said it, that there's going to be hunger throughout the world. And the world's economy will be shaking. And, and it is happening. I don't know, but I don't know if you can feel it, but it is everywhere. But you can speak that as for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, it will not come near my door. And that is what we want to do tonight, to activate the Christ in you. When you pray, when you pray and you speak, believe that it is happening. Somebody said, when you have a dream and, and you have money, you never see the money. When you have a dream and you are peeing somewhere, you wake up and you pee on yourself. It comes to pass very quick when it's not a good one. But we want to pray 
believing that no all the things that we are speaking we are speaking in the power and in the authority of the Christ in us because we are anointed hallelujah hallelujah can you be on your feet can you be on your feet I wish I did not have like a prayer topic so that we can just we can just pour our heart out because tonight what I want us to do is to speak to speak to speak I don't know what you're going through I don't know what you're facing if you can come and dip your hand into the oil and I don't your hair Just because you are the anointed one to awaken the Christ in you, you need it for your prayer tonight. There is nothing too hard for him. Hallelujah. Just anoint your head. Anoint your head. Christ means the anointed, the anointed one, the anointed one. He came to show you the way. He came to tell you everything he said is the truth. And he is the life. He is the light. And he has given us power and authority to be like him, to be called the sons and daughters of the most high God. And that the things that he came to do, even greater things, are we going to do? I want you to lift up your voice and begin to glorify him. I want you to lift up your voice and call upon the spirit of Elohim, the spirit of a living God. Marosa kipata, lepa lo satus kapi, repe de be kasenta la hatu celebra, be kabala salatus kapati lebre, tibro shati tahina mahara, makosa pala brada basuli prati dalabu, repe kapata pala vatole prati lebu, rakata la masata la brosh. you want to begin by praying about the desires of your heart like i said there are things that we've prayed for that we haven't seen come to pass and we we, we we've neglected them we don't even care about them but yes still we need them in our life i want you to speak like christ did and when you speak believe that it will come to pass yes, so because there is power in your mouth he has given us the power so whatever is your heart desire the utmost of your heart desire i want you to pray Believing it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, as a daughter of God, I 
the Son of God. Ask your Father who is in heaven. The Bible says, even we that are sinners, when our children ask for bread, we do not give them scorpions. How much more our Father who is in heaven. So ask whatever the desire of your heart is, put it before the King of Kings, help the Lord of Lords, ask for Like I said, there are a lot of predictions and prophecies that 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 speaks about how the times are difficult and how how hardships are ahead and things are going to be tough and all that. But we are praying with the Christ voice in us. We are de we are declaring and decreeing that whatever is coming, we will not be a part of it. Because although we live in this world, we are not of this world. So whatever is coming, whatever wind is blowing, we stand like Jesus stood up in the boat and said, peace be still. We are declaring that peace will be still in our family. We are declaring that peace will be still Jesus. in our church. Yes, we are Lord. declaring that peace will be still with our children. We are declaring that peace will be still with our finances. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Whatever is heading our way, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we 
When the year is getting to an end, then the enemy realizes that he hasn't been able to achieve his goals because many other plans that he had concerning your life that he didn't even want you to be alive to see this day so what they do is they have to work hard to make sure that whatever they plan concerning your life will come to pass so we are standing in our christ form and we are declaring that whatever they planned 
and whatever they are planning for it to happen before the end of the year we turn it around because they will see us even doing better and they will know that there is the Christ in us and it has been activated so we are praying and we are decreeing that whatever they plan concerning our life for it to happen this year and whatever they intend to do before the end of each year this year we are coming against it in the name of in Jesus name lift of up Jesus. your voice and pray that is not in our favor that is against our well-being that the gathering, O oh Lord, that is set to destroy our family. That the gathering, O oh Lord, that is set to destroy our job. That the gathering, O oh Lord, that is set to take our life before the end of the year. In the name of Jesus, we declare. In the name of Jesus, we decree. In the name of Jesus, we declare that it will not happen. We declare that it will not happen. We send it back to send it. In the name of Jesus, Things happen and challenges come and people are not able to stand. We are praying. We are bringing God's family palace and everybody who is a member of this church before the throne of grace. Sometimes we don't even understand. I ask myself, why did Judas have to kiss Jesus? Jesus taught them a whole lot of things. And the way they live their life, that is why um, when, 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 when Peter 
when Jesus was arrested, the people were, were, were able to identify the disciples of, of Jesus easily. Why? Because they looked like him. So Judas was like, if you go, you might not be able to make him out. Because we all look alike. He's trained us in such a way that we are like him. So I will go. When you come, the one that I will kiss, he is Yeshua. So the wind may blow, but some people will be able to stand. But others will leave, blaming it on the usher, blaming it on the sister. And, and I find it very difficult to understand that believers are, are one of the people who find it very difficult to forgive one another. Just, just one thing a sister or a brother did. He says, I have to leave this house. Like I said, I've said before that I've seen people stand in front here talking about Papa praising him, how he was there for me, and I don't know what to say. He's my father, and I don't see them anymore. And 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 and, and they say, No, Papa hurt me. And I asked them, I said, So upon all the things that you said. If truly he did, you couldn't find it in your heart to forgive. And you call yourself a believer. So we are all not the same. And the wind will blow. And we want to pray against some of us being the chaff that the wind will blow away. Like Jesus made his disciples. We, 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 we are praying to God to help us to stand. In trying times that all the members of this church regardless of what they are going through when the time of challenge when difficult times when tempting and trial times come we should be able to stand on our feet because the man that we are following that that his name is Jesus the Christ of God he he, he, he had to face a whole lot of things and he stood his ground to accomplish the mission for which he came so we are praying that God give God's family palace and his members the strength to withstand any situation, to withstand any wind that will blow, to withstand any, any challenges that may come our way. Lift up your voice and pray for everybody in the church. We are praying for the church. We are praying from the leadership, from pastor to everybody that God should put us on our toes. Maro sakaba Rebecca tuska tebe hinema Rahase kato zaba Roshi kapa hine bosata Rehatu dare bahata Bakosa la brane bosapi Jesus is Lord We pray O God for your divine strength O Lord We know that times will come We know difficult times will come We know trial times will come We pray for the power to stand we pray for the power to overcome we pray for the ability marosa kapa to salema rebeka to skakapa rosani mahati kale rosa hata reka to na breneba meka bala sota na patika tu rebato na basila brahata bakusha prahe na muso eka kaya bala basa bahaka bala kapa roro muso rebeka papa papa robo bos Ik heb 
Do you want to pray and thank God for the night? Let's pray and thank God for the night. Father, we pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We bless your holy name. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise for the opportunity that you have given us in you. That you see us, oh God, as brothers and sisters. You see us as friends. You've even given us the power to even look up to us. If only we have the faith, we have, we have confidence for that we appreciate you. Father, beginning and continuing from today, oh God, let us see ourselves not as people who, who come to you crying, but people who have been given the power to speak things into being. That when we encounter situations, we will not weep and we will not look for other solutions. But we will open our, our mouth and begin to declare and establish things. Awaken the Christ in us. Awaken the faith in us, oh God. To see you from a different perspective. We praise your holy name, oh God. We give you all the honor and we thank you for what you've done tonight. We say glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, shout a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We take offering. <laughs> 